You know, a lot of people out there are looking for an easy answer to the problems that we know are there today in our world. I don't have an easy answer. I don't have an easy solution. The economy is imploding. We're looking at $111 per barrel of oil. Where do you think that's going to send the cost of food? We got a lot of people literally circling the wagon like a hamster in the wheel, talking about the problem, spending their entire lives in front of a box, in front of a computer. The very thing, the internet that is, the platform that could collapse if we have an economic fallout in on its own footprint, just like WTC number seven. The world is a very strange place. If I had all the answers, I would give them to you if it were this easy. To just change things, things would be changed already. Things will change on this planet when people are ready for a change. My mother lives in the Upper West Side of Manhattan. She's chosen by her own free will and volition to live in the urban grid. I'm very concerned about my mother. I'm concerned about my father who lives in the DC metropolitan area. But you can only share the information that you have to share. There's a point that you realize you have to step back and let people make their own decisions. People right now are losing hope to a certain degree. There's a lot of depression going around. I was walking downtown the other day, not very surprising to see so many people walking with their heads down as if, as if there was no life in them, as if the life has been literally sucked out of every cell in our body. I mean, what's going on? What's going on with you? What's going on with me? What's going on with this world? And I know that insanity is the process of doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results. We can't continue to try to take on this quote unquote elite with the same tactics that we've been using for years and years and years. When people talk about solutions, uh, you have to be ready for what the solutions are. To disconnect from the matrix, to say goodbye to this control grid, is to say goodbye to all your trinkets and bubbles and things you depend on to get by in life. For this world to truly change, to prevent mass starvation and economic fallout. When, at that point, you'll see the importation of Chinese Kamut berries and rice will be cut off. We have to be prepared if we are going to stay alive and take care of our family. To grow food, to work with one another, to actually learn what it means to be civically responsible in our own communities, in our own neighborhoods. I mean, what do you think is going to happen when the police department cannot afford to pay its officers. When we have layoffs, we have a breakdown in the basic fundamentals of the social order. That will be a catastrophe. How are you prepared to feed your family? How are you prepared to protect your wife, your children, the people that you love? This is not some rant about getting the guns and getting the farm. A lot of us won't have that option. And time and money, two things that we independently and collectively as a nation are running out of. People expect that you must have this crystal clear solution, a way to be the leader for everybody, and I think that's part of the problem. In our own communities, we have to be responsible. We have to be prepared to engage our neighbors in dialogue and a fallout, most of all, for the safety of our women and children, we have to be prepared to police our own streets without getting caught up in some militia movement or vigil, uh, vigilante psychology, where we ourselves are also living in terror and paranoia, wondering who the enemy is. I do believe before all of this is finished that each one of us will be tested on some level or another. How strong is your spirit? psychologically as you face the news about your economy imploding around you, as you witness your career falling apart around you, as you witness more and more money, zeros and ones, being deducted for a wide variety of reasons from your checking account. Who are you really? Where are you? What is your true value? When you become stripped of all that you own and all that you have, that is the moment when you can realize the true value, the true currency that you have is your focus, your intention, your passion, your time. Once we begin to incrementally disconnect from the Federal Reserve banking establishment privately founded in the year 1913 is the sooner we can reclaim our own freedom. The day is gone 
for us to continue debating about September 11, 2001 over and over and over again. If people cannot figure out the basic fundamentals of the economy, why we're running out of money, why we're printing money out of thin air, to hold this economy up, to prop it up through Bush's plunge protection team. If we can't even figure out how to do that collectively, your friends, your coworkers, your family, collectively as a nation, the idea of restoring this country to a great republic is a total illusion. I want you to uh, check out my website, alexansory.com. There are a number of news headlines there for you to be aware of. Cameras being linked between schools and the police department. We have more information about Russia threatening in a more violent fashion every week, the United States. And we also see their partnership with China as they observe what may take place in the near future in Iran. We are now moving in between worlds out of this one and into a completely different one. To survive it, you've got to go beyond perceiving that this is the end of the world, but a end of a certain cycle of existence. When you get to that point where you can face yourself in the mirror, you do have a fighting chance.